37. The Bible said in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Praise God. He had not yet been glorified. He had not yet died, been buried, resurrected, ascended back into heaven, and been glorified. And so the Holy Ghost had not yet been given. John chapter number 16, we can read some scriptures there, and, and uh, maybe just for the sake of time I won't read all that, but but you can read some scriptures there in the 16th chapter of John. And he goes on and tells his disciples of the Comforter. I already mentioned that after prayer this morning. That the Comforter <coughs> that God. Jesus mentioned, the Comforter would come. He said, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. If I go away, he will be sent back to you. I'll go and I'll pray the Father. And the Father will send you another comforter. will not leave you comfortless, he said, but I will come to you. In verse number 37, Jesus stands up and he cries out, makes this great proclamation in the midst of all of those people. And he says, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. This particular passage of scripture here that I read to you today in your hearing Jesus is quoting from the 55th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 55 and verse number 1 begins and says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come to the water. You that have no money, come, buy without money, buy without price, buy wine and oil, buy milk, try it, all those things. If you're thirsty, he said, I've got something to give you. The Bible tells us in one place in the Old Testament that a fountain was opened when Jesus was crucified. There was a fountain opened in the house of David for sin and for uncleanness. Here Jesus says, if any man's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. We've already passed the fourth and fifth chapter of the book of John where Jesus meets with the woman at the well. He said, I must needs go through Samaria. He come to Sychar. There's a well there. He sits down on the well being wearied with his journey. A woman comes out to get water, and Jesus tells her, give me to drink. She said, sir, you don't have anything to draw with, and they begin to talk back and forth. And Jesus said, if you knew who I was, you would ask me, and I would give to you living water. And she said, sir, whence hast thou this water? You don't have anything to draw with. This well is deep. Hundreds of steps going down into that well. And wrapped around the curvature of the well and people go down in there and get water. You don't have anything to draw with. How are you going to do it? And Jesus said, I have living water. He begins to talk to her about the water of the Spirit. He begins to visit with her about having a drink of life, giving water. After a little while, a little discourse there in that chapter around the 15th verse or so, amen, and Jesus talking to that woman, she said, sir, give me this water. I've been convinced that not only do you have it, but it's available for me to have as well. Praise God. This water that Jesus had, he became the fountain of water. The fountain was open in the house of David for sin and for uncleanness. Praise God. This word here, he said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly or his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. That word rivers comes from a Greek word that means streams. It means a river, a torrent. Strong's Concordance this morning said to me that it meant that it was a prolonged flow. Amen. A fresh running flow of living water. Amen. He said it's going to flow out of them. Out of who? Out of the believer. The believer is going to become a river source. A tributary, if you will, that goes back to the divine source, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. That word flow, that it's going to flow out of the believer, that means that it will overflow them. It will be a prolonged and a sustained flow. Amen. That comes from within the believer. Praise God. I want to tell you this morning.
for in Jesus Christ is the life source of living water. Amen. 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 He tells those believers there, he said that there's a, <coughs> he said there is a river that is supposed to flow out of you. Not just a river, but Jesus said that out of those believers, out of us, more than one believer, he said there is supposed to be rivers flowing out of every one of them. It's wonderful if you've got a river this morning, but it's even greater still if you have rivers of living water. Not just one source of it, but from within the life of every born-again believer that is spirit-filled, I might add. Amen. Every spirit-filled born-again believer has a source where there are multiple streams and rivers of water that are flowing out of them. We can read where? Now, remember the book of James chapter 3, verse 11, I believe it is, where he said that a, a, a fountain cannot produce bitter water and sweet water. All right? If you got a well, like we had one place we lived that was a sulfur well, Run a tub full of water in the bathtub, no, uh, an old uh, white porcelain over cast iron tub. Run a tub of bath water. The children get in and sit a while and they got out. Brother Junior, the bottom of that tub was black with that old sulfur that had come out. And then the water stank. I never told the wife one day, I said, we could dip cattle in that water. Never have to put a fly tag on them. Had such a high sulfur content. But if it's a sulfur well, it's all it's going to produce is sulfur water. Amen. Not going to be sweet water. Praise God. What's that have to do with me? I'm telling you, you become as a Christian, as a believer. Amen. You become a source of water that men and women drink from. Whether you realize it or not this morning, whether or not you are a source of living water or you're a source of bitter water, you are producing a flow that's coming out of your life that other men and women are being affected by. And James said in his book that you cannot produce bitter water and sweet water. Amen. And then the sweet water for which we long, the sweet water for which the soul of man thirsts for, and it can only be found in the life of a Christian. It can only be produced from a heart that is surrendered to Jesus Christ. If your well, if your fountain produces bitter water, it's not coming from Jesus Christ. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. Let me read to you very quickly. Genesis chapter number 2. Way back here in the very, very beginning of all this. Amen. I want to read a few verses there. We're going to try to tie some things together and preach this to us this morning. Yeah. Genesis chapter number 2. Verse number 10 said, A river went out of Eden to water the garden. The garden of Eden. Where there was paradise there. And from thence, or from Eden... It was parted and became four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That compasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. And Brother Jeff Owens mentioned this verse on Thursday night. The gold of that land is good. Amen. There's delium and there's onyx stone there. The name of the second river is Gibson. The name of that, they said it compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. The name of the third river is Hidekel which is that that goes to the east out of Assyria. And the fourth river is that great river the Bible called it in one place. Amen. The river Euphrates. Amen. At that particular time that creation happened, the entire world was being watered from one river that flowed through the middle of the Garden of Eden and then it went out and became four rivers. Praise God. Multiple rivers supply multiple things. Four rivers of water, water the whole earth. Oftentimes through scripture, water is used as a metaphor or a type of the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Brianna, give me Psalms 36, verses 8 and 9. I want you to read for me those scriptures this morning. Psalms chapter 36, verses 8 and 9. I want to read you just a few verses, show you where that the Spirit is often likened to water in the scripture. Amen. Where the Lord is using water to typify the Spirit's flow. Amen. You got it? Tell me when you got it. Psalms chapter 36, verse 8 and verse 9. Read it, says. And they shall be abundantly satisfied with And the they fat shall be abundantly satisfied with fatness. Of thy house, and thou shalt make. Thy house. 
them drink of the river of thy pleasures. You're going to give them drink of the river of what? Thy pleasure. God is going to supply, abundantly supply, a drink to the believers from his river of pleasure. What else did he say? For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Thee is the fountain of what? Thy life. The fountain of life is with God. A fountain, again, a type, a metaphor of the water being the spirit. Amen. Going to feed out things. Going to give out an abundant supply of the water of life. Isaiah chapter number 44, verses number 3 and 4 said, I will pour water on him that is thirsty. I will put a flood on the dry ground. I'll pour my spirit Help upon him. thy seed Help him, and Jesus. my blessing upon thy offspring. They're going to spring up as among the grass. They're going to be like willows by the water courses. Amen. The book of Joel, chapter number 2. Another very familiar passage of Scripture, verse number 23. He said, but you. Amen. Be glad. Joel, chapter 2, verse 23. But be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Help he goes on to say that because of that rain, the floors are going to be full and the fats are going to overflow. And then there's going to be a harvest that is brought by the supply that is from the river of life. Amen. Jesus says here in the 38th verse of the book of John, chapter 7. Amen. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. Help him, Jesus. An Old Testament verse is obviously being referenced here. What Old Testament verse is it that tells me? Amen. That out of a belly is going to flow a river of living water. What Old Testament verse could Jesus possibly be mentioning here? Praise God. The Help entire Old Testament, we find through it time and time again, where water is used to typify the Spirit. Some of those that I read, and there's many others. Amen. But this particular prophecy of Jesus Christ, I'm going to take you to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, and verse number 10. For line must be upon line, and precept must be upon precept. Here a little, and there a little. And then verse number 11 said like this, For with stammering lips and another tongue, yes. I will speak unto these people. And then verse number 12 said, And this is the refreshing, Help the which will cause the weary, and to be made to rest. What are you saying? I'd say a 700 and something years prior to the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, and said it's just been here a little and there a little.
settlers plodding onward, their steps slow. The grandfather clock's thrown out. The piano's thrown out. The chiffonade's thrown out. The old buffet's thrown out. Lighten those wagons. Amen. Don't overburden the mules. Bedsteads were thrown out. There's still places today where there's artifacts littering the trails that took men and women to Oregon, the men and women of the gold fields of California in the rush of 1849. And they, and there's places, Brother Junior, where there's men and women throw things overboard and to try to get to the river. Help him, God. In the shades of those rivers, they found refreshing. It was by a river. I've been there. I've stood on the hill. Amen. What we call, according to history, the last stand hill where General George Armstrong Custer, his troops were massacred by a horde upon a horde of Ogallala Sioux. Amen. Those Indians had gathered on the river of the greasy grass, is what they called it. The little big horn river. I stood there, stood there in the middle of the summertime and looked down on that river. Everything around was dry and barren, but along the edges of that river was grass. It been green, slick, greasy grass. It been just like the old Indians called it. It was a place they sought for refreshing. The Indians were camped there because they could be refreshed there. It's the same way it was when Custer and those troops massacred those Comanches and Cheyennes at the banks of the Washita River. And then they were camped there to be refreshed. Do you know why sinners like to talk to you? You know why it is people like to be around you? If you're a spirit-filled believer, it's because they are refreshed. And the scripture tells us, the apostle Paul said, that by them I have oft been refreshed. And then do you have the river? Is it flowing? What are you producing? Bitter water? Church is too long. The preacher's too loud. The way is too straight. Amen. The standard's too high. He preaches too much. Amen. I don't want to live like that. Amen. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in shouting. I don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Amen. People get to producing bitter water and they wonder why nobody wants to be around them and wonder why people won't visit when they go to church. Amen. Nobody likes a sulfur well. Amen. But if your life is submitted and surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God is flowing out of you, people are going to be drawn to you. Listen. Christ is the source. Isaiah 28 11. Something that he could have been mentioning here could be the scripture he's using in John. Another Old Testament passage you could easily fit this here is the 47th chapter of Ezekiel. He said, I showed me a river of water. And when the angel showed me a river of water, there was a man with a line in his hand. He said he measured out a thousand cubits. I found water to my ankles. He measured another thousand. I found water to my knees. He measured another thousand. I found water in my loin. He measured another thousand. I found in a river that couldn't be passed over. Amen. But in the book of Ezekiel, he said he shooed me where the river was coming from. He said it issued out from under the south side of the altar. Amen. Listen to me this morning. The river that you and I are supposed to be having flow out of us. It's Genesis is always from the altar. And in that place of sacrifice and surrender. Help him, God. Yes. The, Ezekiel saw the river. He sees it come out from under an altar. From under the altar, it flows under the door of the church. From under the door of the church, it flows south. It also flowed to the east, to the north, and to the west. But Ezekiel said, wherever that river went, there was life. Everything that the river touched lived. And he said there were great multitudes of fish. And then the river is a life-staining source. And then the Serengeti deserts of South Africa. And then over there where it gets so dry. At a certain time of the year, those rivers are completely dry. And then the, uh, uh, the wildebeest die. The alligators die. The birds die. The lions die. But then all of a sudden, Sister Debbie, the rain.
rainy season comes and just overnight the water comes down those tributaries and it says that they, that almost and then the desert will green overnight it will bloom overnight there is instantly life where there's water Jesus. Amen. Jesus. I'll tell you why it's important this morning Jesus said if you believe everybody in this building this morning is a believer I tell you, being a believer is not enough simply in and of itself. You have to be a spirit-filled believer. There's people who believe that Jesus died. There's people who believe that he is the Son of God. There's people who believe that Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. But they're not Christians. It's not simply enough to just know that he was or who he was. And the fact that a sinner on the street the fact that I stopped and talked to a man with Brother Jeff just yesterday, standing on the street corner, very obviously not a Christian man. His life spoke of his sin. Hey man, matter of fact, he sinned right in front of us as we stood there on the sidewalk and asked down. Hey, and but that man believes in Jesus. Uh, he believes he's the Son of God. No, that is not enough in itself. Uh, you must act on that belief. Uh, you must receive Jesus Christ. And brother, the Bible tells us that out of you shall flow rivers of living water. The altar, the temple that Ezekiel was shown in that vision, where the river came from. Stay with me this morning. That river that Ezekiel saw came from the temple of God. But we don't all have to go where Ezekiel was and try to dig up that temple. We don't have to go to Jerusalem this morning and try to find us a temple. We don't have to join the Jews at the Wailing Wall and start looking for a temple. Why? Where's the river at now? It still comes from an altar, and it still comes, and it still flows in different directions. Four rivers in the book of Genesis. Amen. Four different progressions to the river in Ezekiel. Amen. Four different directions, north, south, east, west. Amen. I believe every one of us ought to have four rivers at least flowing out of us. A river of life, a river of blessing, a river of everything, all kinds of things coming from us. But why? Why? Help him, God. Why Help do we not go to find the temple? Him, why are we not reliant on that? Simply this. It's because of 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know you not? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Is there a river coming from under the altar in your heart this morning? Is there a river? Is there rivers that are flowing out from under the altar of your heart today? What are you producing this morning? Our body becomes the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so the tributary, it starts in heaven with the Lord. And then with Jesus Christ. Amen. As the Savior of the world. That he opened the fountain. But then after that, he sent the fountain back to live in the life of every believer. Amen. That you should receive what? Power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, there's power in the Holy Ghost in the life of a believer. Amen. It becomes a river of refreshing. A river of blessing. Your life affects someone. No man, the Bible said, liveth unto himself, and no man dieth unto himself. Your fingerprints, for good or bad, are going to be left on someone's life around you. You're influencing people by the way you live. Amen. Is your life of abundant blessings from God? Your life of surrender and submission to the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it drawing other men to you? And they say, I want what he has. I want to be like him. Amen. Are you a sour hypocrite? Amen. Are you a bitter person? Are you a hypocrite? Are you a sinner this morning that are driving men away from Jesus? Are you giving the church a bad name? Amen. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I hope men and women can get close to me and be refreshed by the river that swells inside of us. Just today, in this service, as we stood and began to pray, I kneel to pray. I lay down on my stomach, stretch out low on the floor, put my face in the carpet sometimes to pray. Amen. But it's also right. Somebody told me one time, I said, I don't think we all stand up to pray. I said, well, Jesus said, when you stand, pray. So if it is, there's not anything wrong with it. Amen. I'll tell you, if it's there, if it's in the book, listen to me. Every answer you got, 
These come from right here. Every question you answer needs to come from right here. When you stand, pray. Praise God. So I believe as we stood this morning, we began to pray. There was something that happened in the atmosphere of this little building right here. Men and women began to take the focus off of their own self. Amen. You weren't praying just for your need. But someone was praying for Brianna. Someone was praying for Cameron and Jada. Some were praying for Sister Nancy. Some for Brother Junior's family. Amen. Some for a church in Uvalde, Texas, where there's full of grief and hardship. And all of a sudden, from within us, uh, in those moments of intercessory prayer, uh, there was a river that began to flow out. Uh, amen. Sister Nancy told me yesterday uh, that the Lord strengthened her on Thursday night. Uh, and uh, just as we began to pray here, uh, and then the doctor had texted and said she's sick uh, and she's needing prayer. Uh, I said, we can do it on FaceTime. I can call. We can do it uh, just, just, just by prayer. However, he said she's not able to talk and, and we need you to pray. And we began to pray. You were here. Uh, and then the Spirit of the Lord touched her and strengthened her. Uh, and then just this morning, uh, I mean, there were men and women in a Spanish church uh, in Uvalde, Texas, uh, that suddenly were bursting of the refreshing uh, from the river that flowed from within us uh, as we pray in the Spirit. Uh, and then are you producing uh, a life-giving flow? Uh, is it sustained uh, and prolonged and coming out of you? Brother Junior sits here this morning a product of the flow that came from Brother Don Vaughn. A river was flowing out of him. And 29 years ago, he got a hold of Brother Junior Allen, brought Thank him you, to Jesus. the altar. You, and Brother Junior became a little tributary yes. from the river that Brother Don had. Yes. Sister Jean, this morning, had we had a service normal and went according to our normal schedule, Sister Jean would be standing here right now fixing to close out Sunday school and been teaching our class. She is a product of a river that flowed out of Sister Wilma Milliken and then it flowed down by a little girl named Jean Faulkner and she drank of that source and then because the source was not Sister Wilma and the source was not Donnie Vaughn. No, they were just tributaries. It was coming from the divine source. I became a tributary after getting into the river. Brother Ronnie Adams, a preacher from down in, well, he's pastor in Mississippi now, I guess he's from Alabama. Brother Ronnie and Sister Kathy Adams was in revival at our church, and I got into a river that was flowing out of that man as he preached that revival. I fell into the altar and began to repent. And Brother Ronnie, when I raised up, raising my hands uh, and praising God for salvation, uh, he was standing right behind the banister where I was kneeling right here. Uh, and he grabbed the microphone and began to say, uh, I'm a newborn believer. Uh, I found me a brand new life. Uh, and I changed my direction. Uh, I'm telling you, I became uh, a tributary because of his river. Uh, my wife this morning, uh, who you are as your pastor's wife, uh, the first lady of the church, uh, and that she he is a tributary uh, of the life of Brother Joey Hyde, uh, who preached her into the altar uh, as a young girl in the youth camp in Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Uh, and she got into the river, uh, and others have came in into her river. Uh, and then he that believeth on me, uh, out of his belly, uh, will flow rivers of living water. Uh, are you producing a life giving source uh, that men can get a hold of? Uh, in a revival service at Bethany 
after being in five services in one Sunday, amen, for two hours or so, stretched out on her back, amen, shouting on her back in the floor, and God saved her and sanctified her holy, amen, brother, listen this morning, I'm telling you, we are to produce a river of life that others can take from. Preaching in Pembroke, North Carolina for Brother Andrew Smith. We were staying at Angela's quarters, Brother Fred and Shirley Lester had their motor home parked in the parking lot. They drove over to Asheville, North Carolina to visit Billy Graham's home and his library. They came back that afternoon and told Jennifer and I, said you need to take your children to see that. It's very interesting. It's, it's amazing what they have there. So the next day we went. We made a trip to Asheville, North Carolina. I pulled into the parking lot. We parked and got out. Took a family picture. Got ready to go into Billy Graham's home place. Amen. I do not agree with everything Billy Graham preached. Amen. Billy Graham did not always preach every Bible truth. As a matter of fact, he fought against some Bible truths. But we went there that day to that museum about his life. As I was walking in, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And he said, before you leave this place today, I'll deal with your youngest daughter today. Thank you, Jesus. We toured that, Sister Gail. Yes. You would go through stages of his life. At one place, you're in an old milk barn where Billy Graham prayed as a boy. <laughs> then you go on to another place in his life. And every room looked like something. You know, you're in a city. Or, or you were in a radio station in one where he began his ministry in the basement <laughs> of a radio broadcasting there. Amen. But all of a sudden we stepped into a room that smelled of old canvas. Had those old folding wooden chairs that would that the, that the seat folded out this way from the back. And they'd pinch you, you know. And they had those old wooden chairs in there. You could look at the walls and it looked like you was right in the middle of a crowd in a giant tent cathedral. And up there in front there was a, 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 a picture being broadcasted across the wall. It was Billy Graham preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ being the only way. We sat down there in that little room as though we were in a tent revival in 1950 or 60. And then listen to that scrawny young man from North Carolina preach about Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden, there was a gentleman that walked up to the podium and began to sing. And first he was singing. And then it was George Beverly Shea. Thank you, God. Stay with me. Y'all say, you okay? I'm going to preach too long. George Beverly Shea. Walks up as Billy Graham begins to give the altar call. And he begins to sing, How Great Thou Art. And that deep voice, that moving voice that had inspired thousands to pray. He began to sing, And went to the field, and forest glen I wonder, I see the bird sing softly in the tree. Oh, I mean that rich bear tongue belted out. Then sings my soul. Amen. I began to feel a quiver next to me. I looked over, and Addison had tears running down her cheeks. And then George Beverly Shea stopped, and he told how that as a young boy, and then a preacher's son, wayward and backslid, his mother wrote a poem and left it on the organ because she knew that George would come in from the bars and the haunts, and he'd sit down and play the organ. And there was the poem that said, "I'd rather have Jesus than have." Houses or land. I'd rather have Jesus and be led by his little dear's hand. And then George Beverly Shea sat down and then put music to a poem that his Holy Ghost filled mama had wrote. And he got saved on the organ bench. Thank you, Jesus. Coming under a Holy Ghost filled mama. Thank you. And then he became a tributary. Yes. He switched songs in that altar call. We were sitting there with Addison and me, Ben, Brianna, and Jennifer. I was looking at the corner of my eye, her tears streaming down her face. And he began to sing, I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the of a vast domain and be held in sin's rich way. He 
began to say that. Sister Debbie, she pulled on my shirt sleeve and she said, Daddy, I'm lost and I need to pray. And we began to pray with that little girl under a tent inside of a building in a museum. I'm telling you this morning, we walked out of there and the worker said, was anyone's life touched? I said, that little girl, stand up, sissy, come here. You see that Bible this morning? They gave her that. He said, I can see tears in his eyes. He said, nobody's ever got saved here before. I said, as they sung and preached this morning, and then she gave her heart to the Lord. But I'm telling you this morning, Let it 
this shot. And I saw it get on several of the rest of it all of a sudden. There was some of us got in the middle of a river because Sister Jean let it flow out of her. Hey, man, are you letting it flow this morning? Are you a stopped up stagnant water source? Or are you full of life? Oh, my God. Oh. Can you say to the woman on your well, or the man, the boy, the little girl, can you say to them, drink the water that I have? I'm not Jesus Christ, but I am his ambassador. Thank you, Jesus. I have his spirit in me. Oh, I have the same Holy Ghost he had. You, if you have it, you've got the same one he had because there ain't no one to give. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Are you a life source today? Jesus, Jesus. Man, Brother Jeff, was it him? Was it who had mentioned the other night about Peter and John? You know, we're always, well, don't look at me. Yeah. Just look yeah. at Jesus. Don't look at me. I don't, I don't, there's nothing in me. Nothing in me. Well, Peter went against everything we preached, didn't he? He said, look on us. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Peter knew what he had. He knew who he was in Jesus Christ. He knew who Simon was. And that's why he was all right with Peter. <laughs> Woo! He said, look on us. And that man looked at him and Peter said, I don't have what you're wanting, but I have what you need. Oh. Woo. Woo. Lord. I don't have what you want, but I have what you need. Such as I have. Give it to me. Some days worse than others, but we got a filter on it. It's not bad now. She leaned down, brushing her teeth, and tasted that. She said, Oh, that's bad. Here it says. Now, if you're a believer, and you know who you are in the Lord Jesus, and you believed on Him, and you've acted in that belief, out of His belly might flow. Out of his belly can flow. What does it say? It will. It will. It shall. Out of his belly will or shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. So this morning, against what we sometimes we try to hide behind false humility. You know, don't don't look on me. Sometimes it's because we don't want them to look on us because we know we ain't got anything they want. And we know we sure don't have what they need. You know why some churches... I'm about done. I'm trying to follow the Spirit. You know why some folks would rather give money to the drunk? You know why some people pacify themselves by hand and giving handouts to people that are drug addicts? Alcoholics, gamblers, I don't have any food. I need my life bill paid. Need this, need that. They're bums. You know why some people pacify themselves by giving them coins and pennies? It's because they know they have what they want. But they know they really don't have what they need. Peter was the opposite. He didn't have a handout. He had a hand up. He said, I don't have what you want, but I got what you need. Hallelujah. Brianna has a need in her body. Some months ago, back last winter, she stood over here by the door in altar service one night. We was having a good service. I don't think there's but five or four or five of us here that night. Hardly nobody. And the Holy Ghost had moved. People had run and shouted. Goes up and says, here, we was having time. And I come down through here shouting. Brianna's standing over there. She's having trouble with her legs. As I went by, I just laid my hand on her and said, Thank you, Jesus, be healed. And she said that left instantly. Her legs quit her. I don't know whether she's got a pinched nerve or a pulled tendon or what it is this morning. But she's been hurting. 
Brianna has the highest pain tolerance of any of our children. Almost never cries with pain or sickness. She's been in so much pain to the point of tears. She's been in so much pain to the point she said, if I don't get relief, I'll pass out. We pass out. Pain's went. I'm not a doctor. I don't have a medical license. I'm just an old country preacher that has no better sense than to believe what's written in the book. And so this morning, such as I have, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed for the glory of God. So that's awful simple. That's all Peter did. And then he took him by the hand. And he said, let's go. Hallelujah. We're going to church. That man, Peter had a hope to him, but he left him. And he went running and leaping and praising the Lord. And immediately his feet and his ankles received their strength. Are you a believer this morning? You got a river in you this morning? Is there a river still flowing? I saw an open on you one night, Brother Junior Rivers. The first river started flowing that night, Brother Don got you by the hand, and I saw another one open up one night on you. Is it still flowing? Would you try that such as I have right here? In the name of Jesus. You got a river this morning? Thank <laughs> you. 